You know, the Bible talks about that one shall become a thousand. And a family shall become a nation. That's how big the promotions are going to be. That's how big the enlargement of your coast is going to be. You don't have the capacity to do it. May the Lord enlarge your capacity right now. Jabez prays and said that thou will bless me indeed and enlarge my capacity that the things you want to complete the things you want to do oh God will be done thank you thank you Father we give you praise this morning we give you praise this morning thank you we give you praise in Jesus name you may be seated I have much to say but I'll say tomorrow amen i have much to say about the things that are going to happen you know there are many elections that have taken place in this country where we said god is involved we're going to see god in an unusual way in 2019 i'm talking about tangibly amen touching people turning things around amen i'm talking about people who don't know him he says he said he will pour out his spirit upon what he didn't say upon all christians amen so let's have great expectations for 2019 amen 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 the announcements of the results will affect the economy amen praise the lord this morning i've asked miss fatority to come and help us review the year i don't know how she wants to do it so let's just welcome her people of God um, this isn't a time to speak much there's a lot going on and um, I I'm just going to try to summarize what we've done in the network service from the beginning of the year through to November okay Heavenly Father, I commit my words into your hands this morning, O oh God. I ask that you speak through me, O oh God. What should have your people here, Father? Please speak. All of you and none of me, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name. So is this working? Okay. So, um, oh dear. It seems like it's running ahead of me. Okay. So in... Um, 2018 our focus was on the kingdom and the call that was the grand theme of the entire year that's and today is the 364th day there's just one day to go so why do we need to look back at the outgoing year everybody literally that has spoken this morning has alluded to the reasons why we need to look back First of all, so we can do an Ebenezer. In other words, just stop where you are. Look back and acknowledge what God has done. Where, you know, how far he's uh, brought us. I'm going to go very quickly because we have a very short time. We have, um, we have a canopy of praise. So I'm working towards, you know, leaving the stage in, in time for that. Okay. So we're still talking why. So after you do what I call an Ebenezer, they do a sila. And what sila? It means pause and meditate. My brother, Parkwins, spoke about meditating. The need to just, you know, meditate. Think about, okay, you've looked back, you've acknowledged those things, but you want to meditate upon the things that have, you know, transpired in your life. Okay? And the word sila is actually from the psalms Con constantly you see in the psalms after a certain sentence or a group of sentences you see the word sila it says don't go any further right now just just stop and meditate and think about you know what you've just read now still on why so that afterwards we can praise we can give thanks it's very important that we give thanks and pastor has just has you know 
we talked about that already this morning. An attitude of gratitude helps us to enter the new year with hope. We must enter the new year with hope, with expectations like Pastor said. Interestingly, Pastor hasn't even seen these slides at all. So it's like the Spirit of God indeed is one. We need to be grateful. We need to thank God. We, 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 we tend as human beings to look at the things that we feel are missing in our lives. And we do not look at the fact that it's even good that some of our prayers have not been answered the way we want them to be answered. There's a lot to think about when you look back at, at the way things have happened in your life. Okay? Now, finally, so that we can seek the Lord's face regarding his plans for the new year. That is the focus of our looking back right now. You know, there are so many things we plan. Our hearts plan this and that. But the Lord directs us. Because I, there's a prayer I pray for people that let your dreams come to pass in as much as they are in alignment with God's counsel. Because there are a lot of things we pray about that are not God's counsel for us. You know, you and I probably, we know people praying for other people's husbands, for <laughs> praying to marry other people's husbands. Is that God's counsel concern? So we have to make sure that our plans are in alignment with what the Lord has for us. Like, so that, you know, we, we have to submit ourselves for direction of our paths. So now to look more closely at uh, the year, the, the outgoing year. Like I said, the grand theme is the kingdom of the, and the call. And the foundational ideas really are that first and foremost, we are all called. The entirety of humanity is called. And this calling requires a caller, of course, who is our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. And it is only by answering the call that we will be able to accomplish his purpose for our lives and find fulfillment. Okay. I'm going to, the scriptures there, and like I said, I'm going to have to move a little fast. So I may not refer to the scriptures, but if anybody wants these slides, please, I'll be happy to let you have them. Okay. Now, we've talked about the, the broad theme. Each month has a sub theme, which is you know, an expression of uh, the, a particular aspect of the foundational theme. So we have each and every month having its own particular theme. Okay. Now, for we had the same focus for January and February, Pastor. I'm, or am I assuming because I could not find, <laughs> I could not find a separate file for February. So I just, you know, assumed uh, that they, we must have just. January must have run into February. So what we emphasize was that God is a God of order. And the purpose of planning is to put order in our life. chaos and if you look at the tower of uh, of uh, is it babel or babel the minute god pulled order out of what was being done and chaos, chaos reigned they were no longer able to achieve their aims so indeed order is extremely important in order for, well, in order for us to be able to achieve our goals this year and if you look back you if you tend to have led a less than orderly life. You will see points at which if you had just had a bit more order, maybe things would have, the outcomes would have been greater. Because indeed God is a God of order. God is, there's, there's absolute, you know, order in heaven. That is what I believe. What ought to be done is being done as and when due, not uh, anyhow. I, just drawing out of my own experience, I tend to be kind of like a binary person. I'm either on or off. It's zero or one. So, I'm extremely organized or extremely disorganized. There's nothing in between. So, I always have to make a very conscious effort to be organized because the minute I allow myself to be dis become disorganized, everything literally falls apart around me. So, and I have seen that the times I've been able to keep order I've done a whole lot better in all the aspects of my life. That uh, is my own experience. Okay, so that was January for us. We started by putting plans. Well, we were meant to have 
put plans. We talked again about our 20th, uh, 20 year plans. And um, I hope that most people are planning. <laughs> Mrs. Okutiang, why are you smiling? <laughs> I hope that people are planning for their own sake. It's, it's a struggle, but the honest truth is that if you plan, and if you don't plan, if you in five years' time, you will know the result. But you see, you would have lost a lot of ground. So we should just do things as, you know, in order, as, as at the right time. Okay? Now, the focus for March was let your life speak. The key takeaways, rather, for me was that each of us has a vocation. Now, your vocation is not necessarily a goal that you, you pursue because it's not, it, it's not a place you reach, but it's sort of more like a journey. It's a calling that you actually hear. As you go about your vocation, you know, let who you are show through your work, not necessarily through your words. It's, you, 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 it's very interesting that there's some... We talked about this a little bit in the first service, and someone had a, an intense conversation with me after how she had a crop of staff that are all claiming to be Christians, they are pastors, they are this and that. When they are praying in the office, they are falling on the ground. You have to peel them off the walls when they are praying. You know, but when it comes to robbing her, they are also very good at that. You understand, they, they, they don't even think twice before stealing from her or supporting those that are stealing her. So, I mean, what kind of Christianity is that? It's not, it's not what we profess. It has even reached the state that in the workplace, if someone says to you they're a Christian, immediately an invisible wall goes up, doesn't it? You, you just become on your guard. You, you, know, you shouldn't have to tell me. I should be able to figure that out. Okay? So that was March. You should let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Don't tell them about heaven and light. Show them the light. Okay, that was the focus. Now for April, the theme was rising to the call. And the key takeaway for me was we're primarily saved to serve. Okay, the church is the only organization that exists for its non-members. I'm sure that we can all quote that in our sleep by now. Pastor FM. <laughs> But that is so true, isn't it? We're not called. That's why a lot of time we, we do, do not pursue our purpose. Because we feel that ah, we're meant to be doing stuff for people. How about me? But you, you know, the good thing is that as you're doing stuff, you're called to do things for people, to alleviate suffering in some peculiar place or the other. It, it, it's, it's, it only makes sense that God will take care of us. Otherwise, our doing good will not be sustainable, isn't it? So if God does want us to help people, it's enlightened self-interest on his own part to sustain us. Isn't that so? Okay. Sorry, um, I, I know, <laughs> in fact, the, the pulpit is still hot from Pastor, <laughs> from Pastor Park Queens, but I tend to be a bit less... Um, so that's me. <laughs> Just please bear with me. Okay? And that, that was that for April. Now, in May, we spoke about an audience of one. Okay? Please, all these takeaways, to be honest and just to confess up front, they're my takeaways. Because you're, I, I'm summarizing 11 months. It's a little difficult for me to include everything. So the things that sort of like made an impact on my life or made sense to me or found application in my life. There are other, probably other things that a lot of other people came away with. So I'm talking really from my perspective. Okay, so my key takeaways for the month of May, most people live for the applause of their peers. We play to the gallery. We tend to like want people to like us. We want their approval. You finish a message and you ask people, did I, was it good? Did I, <laughs> did I speak well? And stuff like that, you know? We can never please everybody. You, you really just cannot. Even Jesus couldn't please everybody. So who, who am I, you know? We can't meet everybody's expectations, okay? So we must make a choice. And for us as children of God, there really is no choice. We cleave unto God alone. If he smiles upon us, okay? 
neither the smile nor the frown of men can affect, affect us so we must know why we're doing things we must have a clear understanding that it's it's all about what the lord would have me do and am i doing it the way he would have me do it am i pleasing him because very often we hide a lot of things under christianity ah pray for sister lagbaja she has problems it's, it's all gossiping but we are just hiding it you know we 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 have too many issues even as christians so that we must be able to detach ourselves from those issues in the world and sometimes in the church and focus fix our eyes upon jesus and know that if you're pleasing him if anybody else is not happy with you maybe it doesn't really matter maybe it just does not okay so the focus for june is was the high calling love your neighbor okay you shall love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commit commandment greater than these and may i add that there's no other commandment as difficult as this isn't it just very hard to love people <laughs> to love people the way you love yourself we're not even being asked to love people the way you love the way they behave no you can't we can't love the way they behave <laughs> you want to love yourself sometimes you know so it's it's not easy but then like pastor lumide always says grace has already been made available you know so there's nothing that the lord asks us to do that we're not able to do that he hasn't given us the enablement to do. and for me the key takeaways for this are you know you need to ask yourself how does my calling equip me to love my neighbor and i'd like to use this love thing about you know in the context of your calling i'd like to use an example of perhaps a children's church teacher if you i was a children's church teacher for many years and um, if you do not have a passion if you don't love children to be honest you have no there you you are you are you're not likely to have been called to teach them you are very unlikely you are very unlikely to have been called to teach them well i'm not saying <laughs> i'm not saying i didn't as a children's church teacher i didn't love children no I'm, but i'm just reflecting that if i was able to make have any successes at all it could only have been because i love them you can't make an impact in the place you're called to if you do are not able to empathize with people you cannot so that is very important the greatest attribute of god is love everything he does is out of love we are to love like him particularly through our vocation even when he chastises and punishes it is out of love so the the love aspect cannot be taken away or sort of like dissected and removed from our calling you have to love what it is that you are called to do and the people whom you are called to serve because it's all about service now for in addition to that in june we had the financial peace weekend which was anchored by the men's group because uh, june is i think father's day that's <laughs> so they took uh, charge of that and i'm only just including that for a record sake um, i will skip that okay now our focus for july was god at work your vocation in all of life and uh, we had the good fortune of having dr adegbola minister to us on one of those sundays and um, he made quite an impression on me with some of the things that he said and he said when you are doing what you are ordained to do you will achieve success sometimes these things sound like clichés but when they come from people who have indeed who are indeed doing or you know all the things in their lives have been orchestrated towards a certain calling and they're walking in it then we can really believe that they're more than clichés For me the key takeaways were that you know there are various domains within which we have vocations church you are called you can be called to be a pastor or a prophet but you will also be called on the home front to be a husband you, in the state you you might have tasks in the in in the in your community that you're you know called to do and all that you know that there are various domains and various vocations that each individual has within those domains and I, 
he said that if what occupies you within any of these domains is not your vocation you know you might be working across purposes with god's uh, plans for you and if in, indeed if you look at it if uh, you're called to be a pastor and you're functioning as an evangelist you're in the domain indeed but is that your calling is that what you're supposed to do so we're really supposed to find what we each of us is supposed to do in every single domain in each of the different domains okay that was those were my takeaways for that uh, month now in august our focus was on him by him for him and by him to him and for him now my key takeaways from august uh, my primary calling as followers of christ is by him to him for him indeed that god calls us to himself to be like him and to fulfill his purpose for our lives so this calling and this kingdom thing is all about purpose and the purpose is to be found in God. It's to be discovered in Him. Okay? The primary calling provides direction for the kind of person we're supposed to be. I've already spoken about if you're a children's church uh, teacher, it, it's it just it, it's it's a moot point that you must love children. You know that is the kind of person you must be. You must be. You must. There must be something within you that stirs when you are with children or when you are faced with children's issues. Okay, so that's you know that for the month of August. Now in September, the theme was the call of duty, everyone, everywhere, and everything. Now, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And for me, the key takeaways were that our secondary calling was because in the month of August, we talked about the primary calling, you know, and for September, the secondary calling is that we should think, speak, live, and act entirely for him. We should be totally immersed in him. Again, like Pastor said, there are no battles in here. Not in church. Our battles are when we get outside. But if we are sufficiently immersed in him, we will be able to face those battles. We will be able to walk in, you know, in our calling and be fulfilled while doing that. The secondary calling is how we ought to spend our time. Um, I don't want to, because of time pressure, I don't want to go into this because I tend to, I, I might just go off on a tangent, but like I said, if you want these slides, please let me know. I will make them available. Okay, I've tried to summarize everything in one. Now, in September, we had the GLS Summit. I'll, again, I won't talk too much about that, but I remember simon sinek who was the last speaker and of course i mean it's a leadership thing all right but it's run by a church so definitely it's faith-based and it's our faith it's a christian faith it's you know by christians but for the whole world okay he talked about life being an infinite game and that your only true competitor at the end of the day is yourself in other words you're supposed to be constantly seeking to be better we're called again it's about our calling we're called to constantly seek to be the best possible version of ourselves that we could be in other words we cannot operate at levels of mediocrity god is an is a god of excellence we're not the focus is not on competing with others okay but it's you're competing with yourself i try at the end of each year to look back and say to myself that how can you improve the things you did last year how can you be a better person how can you be a better mother a better colleague a better sister a better better in every you know sphere as much as possible but again it's myself i'm pacing i'm not looking at what others are doing um, my each and every one of us has like uh, you know your own time frames your own path like yoruba say it's your own you your own calling is your calling okay now in october we talked about now let me just look at the big screens for some reason i can no longer see that <laughs> answering the call 
okay answering the call and of course it was our anniversary month the 12th anniversary and we had uh, six great speakers six absolutely great speakers who talked to us all talking you know either directly or tangentially about answering the call and um I chose one because obviously I can't summarize what six people said in the time frame that I have. I chose one and please, it's random. It's not as if Pastor <laughs> Bades was more spiritual or more, I was more blessed. Or, okay, I took more notes. <laughs> so my key takeaways from Pastor Bade Ogulan is we're, we're all called and anointed differently. And this is, this is literally flowing from what i said about september that you know your calling is your calling okay we're all called and anointed differently and we come to church for three reasons uh, to be imparted with knowledge a burden and power and um, by the way I, I i i've written it in that order knowledge a burden and power but when i was looking at it it seemed to me that the burden ought to be first but he has his reasons for ordering it like this okay knowledge to function in our area of calling and as you can well imagine I, I, i'm not i'm not a small girl anymore i mean i've seen several decades and therefore i've been to a lot of churches you know i've been a member of many churches because i've you know lived in different places but you see the kind of knowledge that comes forth from this pulpit is truly incredible both services but it seems like i don't know just, just me, uh, pastor parkwin spoke about it too that the kind of knowledge that comes from here that if we would only take that knowledge and go out into the world and you know apply that knowledge that the impact on our lives would be unbelievable it would be like dropping a bomb we'd be so completely lit we would even we ourselves would not believe so that's really is what the purpose of church is to knowledge to function in our area of calling and then of course the burden like i said how a lot of times you hear things from the pulpit that you know that the Lord is speaking to you directly. Not necessarily when there is even a ministration and pastor is prophesying or something. It might just be a word said in passing that even the man of God that is speaking has no idea. But you see, that, that word enters your spirit and will not leave you and you will not sleep. You have a burden about it. And unless and until you do something about that, you know, you're just never at ease. That burden, you know, is usually about a specific area of our individual calling. It happens a lot in church, okay? A power, supernatural answers to solutions regarding the burden. The burden you receive from here, where are you going to get answers from? From God, often he speaks from the pulpit, okay? So those are the, th regarding answering the call, those are the things that we come to church to do. A call is, you know, a commission to solve a problem. It's always about solving a problem for a particular group of people, okay? Make sure that you bless humanity. That really is answering the call. If you feel that you're called to do something and you're just blessing your pocket, then it probably isn't your call. Maybe you really quite haven't quite found your call. You have to be blessing humanity. It's inarguable. In and um, just as an aside, now, and I probably, it's come to me now why I chose Pastor Badi. Because it was during his ministration that I had, I had known my purpose for some time. Not a very short time, not even very long. As old as I am, every birthday I'd wake up and say, why am I happy? I don't even know what I'm on earth for. I don't know what my purpose is for the, for the longest time. But you see, within the last two, two years, I came to understand my purpose. But it's like Caleb knowing his purpose when they entered the, the wilderness and not really being able to do anything on, about it until they came out. They, 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 there will come the time when you actually know what to do about it. And that was what happened to me at that time. I, based on the administration and the burden I received, I started something that is 
directly in line with my calling and um, I'm just I'm just really I'm feeling a lot better for it uh, Caleb's uh, light bulb moment came at 85 <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> thankfully mine came a few decades a few decades earlier than that so uh, that's that for October now for November <clears throat> We had the people of the call and the that quote let me just read out that quotation the call of jesus is personal but not purely individual jesus summons his followers not only to an individual calling but also to a corporate calling it's 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 kind of related to again what pastor parkwin said about you needing other people in order to fulfill your call my key takeaway from that was that the corporate calling, the general to you know, all members of the body of Christ, supports the individual call. You know? So each and every one of us does have an individual call as well as a corporate call. So I could have a corporate call to, be, to support you in a particular way. And somebody else could have that kind of a call to support me in addition to them having their own individual call. So... Um, sorry, let me just read out Steve. Um, we, I cannot read it in, it's not clear. <laughs> so let me just see if I can read it out from here because it's very interesting that uh, Steve Biko said that. Service, don't worry, I still have half an hour. Sir? You can release me before then. <laughs> I can read it, okay. Okay. So it says, we regard our living together not as an unfortunate mishap. In, in other words, we're not thrown together by pure chance. You know, just an unfortunate mishap warranting endless competition amongst us. But as a deliberate act of God to make us a community of brothers and sisters jointly involved in the quest for a composite answer to the very problems of life. So it, it speaks to a lot of things that I've already mentioned. The fact that a call is about solving problems and that we have to do a lot of things jointly, apart from the fact that we do indeed have individual calls. And also to the fact that it's not about competition. Like they say, <laughs> there's no competition in destiny. So it's not, it's not at all. nights I've had. Anyway, well, my thoughts, uh, after going through all this, I just thought to articulate my thoughts in a bit of a sequential way, you know. So our existence is not random. We were each created by God for a specific purpose. And that's why I always used to say to people that, they, you know, if they say to me that you're lucky, I say I'm not lucky. No, indeed, am I unlucky. Luck has nothing to do with me at all. It's orchestration by God. I'm not, I'm, it, it's God working out his purpose in my life. It, there's, it's not luck, either good or bad. Okay? So, our existence is not random. We're created by God, each of us, for a specific purpose. Now, that purpose can only be discovered in him. Not rationalized. I'd like to speak a bit to, uh, about this. Because... You know, there are a lot of motivational books around. And a lot of them have what I call pseudo-Christian talk. You understand? A lot of it, you know, motivational mm -hmm. stuff. There's one popular one that, you know, we, we, that we, has been sent to us on one forum. Okay, not necessarily a, a TBN forum. And um, it said there that your purpose... You decide your purpose. If you decide your purpose is such and such a thing, and you don't like it, pastor is looking aghast. 
that if you don't like it, you change, you, you, you find another purpose. But <laughs> that is such a fallacy. A stool cannot wake up and say, I can't enter my kitchen and see my aboti and it will say to me, you can't sit on me. You were created to be sat upon you. Each and uh, any one, every one of us has a purpose. I'm not the one going to determine my purpose. I can only discover it in Christ. And I mean, Pastor uh, has said this so many times. He keeps saying that you can only discover it. So please beware of all those motivational books that say uh, if you don't like your purpose, you <laughs> find another one. You can you cannot rationalize your purpose. It is always bigger than us. This purpose, this calling, you know, it is always bigger than us. Always about the furtherance of God's kingdom. It's always God's work that we are doing. Okay. Not about our individual wants and needs, but like we said before, of course those will be taken care of. They have to be. I'm not going to be doing stuff for God with youth and be walking the streets naked and hungry, am I? It doesn't glorify him. So definitely that will be taken care of, but we don't need to. It's not going to be the focus. Now, still on my thoughts, it is in discovering our purpose and pursuing it vigorously that we find fulfillment. Okay? And and it is in doing that that we're on track to fulfilling our destiny. It's when you have discovered your purpose and your work, you're walking in it, that you can find any joy, honestly. That you, you, you know, all my years of chasing this and that, guess what it earned me? A head full of gray hairs. It was when I discovered my purpose and started walking in it that I had the kind of peace that is just beyond description. Yeah, and the funny thing is that <laughs> is I, I'm not <laughs> when I was you know running helter skelter and getting gray in the process and making money. I was making more money than when I was pursuing my purpose. So it's not really about what one can make. There's just nothing like personal fulfillment. There's just nothing at all. And, you know, the final point there says that, and that being on track to fulfilling your destiny is, in my humble opinion, the definition of success. That is the definition of success. Not with all the money or all the houses it's if you're on track you have what i call direct line of sight concerning your purpose and you are on track to fulfilling your destiny then you're i mean that that for me is success it's not uh, the way that uh, the world defines success okay. so the calling in the kingdom is all about success can you flip? I think there should be one more. Is, is that the end? Oh, okay. Well, I did end actually with my definition of success. So that's all for me for now. And I hope um, each and every one of us has been able to pick something that they can run into 2019 with. Thank you very much. Come on, let's appreciate her. Come on, we can do better than that. Now you know why I chose her because I couldn't do this. First and foremost, I wouldn't know which slide to leave out. So you would have had 250 slides this morning. You can see what she did. I mean, that's the problem with people who author things. We can't take things out. But leave the slide. Leave her last slide. I want to go from there. And I will close in a few minutes. This afternoon, can I beg you? Listen to me. How many of you are staying to join me in the canopy of praise? Let me see your hands up quickly. Can you put it up like this? If I tell you that rice is attached to it, will you put it up higher? Okay, good. I have made arrangements for lunch for you. So you don't have to go home. Only 50 of you. If you're more than 50, you buy. I have made arrangements for you to have a bottle of Coke or water and rice. Eat so that you can pray well. We don't want you to be praying as if you're hungry. That's very dear. Those of you who are just joining us, you have to share the rice of the other 50 people. My anointing doesn't multiply 50 plates of rice yet. That's how they're multiplying it. I said, stay with her. Yeah, so we're at 2 o'clock. Believe me, it's not, we've already done, you know, one of the things that upsets me about when I go for afternoon programs in other churches or somebody's birthday, you've done service in the morning, you get to the person's birthday at 4 o'clock, they will start with praise and worship. And I'll be saying, hey, she praise and worship in church, in la, Ronnie. 
Et tu peux voir si bien, tu peux quand tu es and worship. Then after that, you listen to one hour sermon, and then they will now finally give you the rice by which time it's cold. So my philosophy is completely different. If you invited me for your birthday party, give me food first. Then you'll be surprised that I will preach and sing like and minister to you like a man who is anointed. Remember the man in the Bible who they fed and he gave the wrong blessing to the wrong child. That's how you provoke the anointing in people's lives. You give them food first. So I promise you at 2 o'clock, we're not doing praise and worship. We're going to go straight to ministering to God for this country. Amen? And then Pastor Austin will be here. I don't know who else is coming. I've invited everybody that said they were going to come, but I don't trust any of them anymore. They are Christians. And Mrs. Uh, Mrs. She has told us about Christians this morning. If they show up, fine. If they don't show up, I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for the country. Amen? Praise the Lord. So at 2, we're going to start on the song. It'll be like 10, 15 minutes of praise not praise, of ministering to God about the country, 10, 15 minutes of prayer, 15 minutes of praise, 15 minutes of prayer. I, we're doing one thing. We're listening to what God has to say about the elections and about the year coming. Amen? Are, are you listening to me? Alright, good. That's what we're going to do. Now, I want you to look at what you said. Now, can anybody here have the boldness? Jide, microphone, or whoever has the microphone. Can somebody get it? Who can tell me the purpose of marriage? With confidence. I want to use that as an example, quickly. You see, this is the problem. You know, I, I, there was a young boy who came to see me. I think he's the bass guitarist. He came to see me. Is he here? The bass guitarist. He came to see me in my office. I said to him, what's your purpose in life? He wants to join our church. And my question to him is, what's your purpose in life? You know? And, you know, he takes a little while and he's confused because most people won't ask you that. And I said to him, you see, when God appeared to Solomon and said, ask me anything and I will give you. I said, if God asks you today, do you notice that 99% of us don't have an answer ready? And yet, we all want to see God. We all want to meet him. We all want to fellowship. But we don't even have anything we want to talk to him about. So if I ask you, most of us here are married. Why did you get married? Because so you can get a cook and steward. Uh, women are going to be angry there. Aren't they? Am I right? You get somebody to cook. Our ATM, somebody, a lady needed an ATM machine. A, a live one. This, this is our problem. And that's why we go out of our way to sit down and try to articulate these things for you. Because if God appears to most of us this afternoon, what do you want? Have you noticed that in Nigeria, we have never had a president who was ready? Do you know the story of Kennedy and Clinton? Who knows the story? Who knows the story of Kennedy and Clinton? John F. Kennedy goes to visit Clinton's hometown. Clinton is a student in a school. That school that's Bill Clinton, by the way. That school was chosen as the school that John F. Kennedy will come to visit. And then Clinton is one of the boys on the row. And as they are walking down the row, Clinton puts out his hand to shake John F. Kennedy's, the president of the United States. And he turns to the boy and says, oh, wait, what's your name? My name is Bill. What do you want to become when you grow up president? He's a 12-year-old boy. 12 years old there are 40 year old people here who don't know what they want to become when they grow up there are 50 year old people going to try and oh, I'm not married I'm not married okay God comes to you and says why do you want to get married I don't know because society said we should be married come on look, look at us that's how we are I'm not going to answer the question. Go and buy my book. It's called The Streetcar Named Marriage. You see, I'm going to become like other pastors now, make money for my congregation. Anyway, but anyway, <laughs> pastors, Paco said I shouldn't, because okay, so I won't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But let me, let, me, let me close with this. And I shared this at Mrs. Uh, uh, Smith's birthday. And I said this. I said, one day, this was recently, and I was in this church. I wanted to travel to Detroit. And I bought my ticket. And it's Lagos. London, London, 
Detroit, Detroit, London, London, Lagos. And God says to me, son, where is your destiny? Where are you going? What's your destination for your trip? And like any other stupid person, I said, Detroit. And God laughed. He says, no, look at your ticket again. Lagos, London, London, Detroit, Detroit, London, London, Lagos. Where's my destiny? Lagos. So I said, oh, Lagos. I said, good. He says, why don't you just drive your car from Ibadan to the Lagos toll gate and come back? You would have fulfilled destiny. Because destiny is not a location. It's a process. He says, when you take your aircraft and you fly to London and you do what you're supposed to do in London and then you take off from London and go to Detroit and do what you're supposed to do in Detroit and then you do what you're supposed to do back in London and then take that flight and get back to Lagos, that's the only time you fulfill destiny. It is a process, not a destination. And that's why when you keep waiting until you have five million naira in your account and you're successful, you will be the most disappointed person on the face of the earth because it is not a location marriage is not a place for you to be happy every day and smiling and your husband doing romance with you my wife is not in service she had a very rough night she had a running stomach all night and i'm supposed to be her husband supporting her i was sleeping with one eye and supporting her with the other one Because I'm a man. I have to sleep. I have to come for this service. I have to get ready. I have to leave her at home this morning. I have to ask Jide, go and find out where the woman is. You know? Now, when we first got married, if she had run into me, I would have run into me. It's love. <laughs> Do you think I love her less? No. We just matured. Am I making sense? And she knows that my sitting there having running to me with her at home is not going to help the church. So she let me go. Am I making sense? So you see that even in my marriage, I am evolving. Am I making sense? And I still love her. I'm still thinking about her. As you can see, with all of you here, I'm thinking about her. That's real love. Isn't it? You know, isn't it? Am I making any sense? So you've got to understand where I'm going this morning. That when you think about it, even your marriage is a journey. And what God gave you was that vehicle called marriage to help you get to your destination. Marriage doesn't just stand by itself. You know, many years ago I was invited to redeem Christian Church of God, gathering of pastors, and I thought they made a mistake. And I should come and speak at a marriage seminar for pastors. So when I got there, I said, are you sure it's me you want? They said, yes. I have left with him. They said, yes, they know. I said, do you know me? They said, yes. Are you sure you're ready for me? They said, yes. So I got on the pulpit and I said, okay, we're in trouble. Let me just say something. You know all these pastors, you know what they've been promising you women? They've been promising you that, they, that you should endure with them now while they travel all over Nigeria preaching the gospel and doing all sorts of things. That when they get to heaven, you will now enjoy the reward of your ministry. I said, they are lying to you. They said, how? How? I said, because there is no marriage in heaven. Marriage starts and finishes where? So when he's telling you, suffer, when we get to heaven, we enjoy, he just lied to you. God's purpose for marriage starts here. Jesus himself said there will be nobody given in marriage and there will be no marriages. For those of us who are called now, it's the people who come after us who are not born again but came into a world of peace that will marry and have children. Am I making sense? So you are a chosen generation. The purpose of your marriage is here on earth. It's not in heaven. You have to know why God called you. That's what this year has been about. You have to know that you're called. You have to know that there is a journey ahead of you. It's not a destination. You know, I, I was... Um, there was a fight in Jesus Embassy at that time. Not a fight, a misunderstanding within the leaders of Jesus Embassy. And I was one of those people who doesn't take sides. I, I've, I've learned to do that. Who doesn't take sides. So I, I didn't take any sides. So we get to 
they take us to Lagos to go and sit down in a panel uh, with the head of the Pastor Esco at that time, the late Pastor Esco, to settle our quarrels. So I'm sitting there, and Pastor Esco is listening to the story from Group A. You know how church is now. Come on, you people know how church is. You don't know how church is. How they go and report themselves to pastors. You don't know. Okay, yeah, God has blessed you in this church because we don't do it. You know? So they are reporting on one side and reporting on the other. So when they finish reporting each other, Pastor Esco takes a look and he, you know, he lifts up his face and sees the neutral Francis at the back. I says, Francis, which one be your own among these people? I said, Pastor, me, I don't get I don't get the point. He said, no, you are now the head. <laughs> I became the head of the family by being neutral. But it was the same Francis. And I drove back to Ibadan, and because by the time I got back to Ibadan, the announcement that had been made that I was the new family coordinator, like state pastor at that time, suddenly people started treating me differently, but it was the same Francis. Nothing had changed. I didn't know the Bible more. None of I know it any less. I was the same person. The reason is so simple. God sees your potential and appoints you. You don't have to be there. He expects you to grow into it. Am I making sense? And all of a sudden, what happened to me was that I began to realize that with that grace, you know what I mean, came an opportunity to become a different kind of person. Am I making sense? That's what the calling does for you. The calling has nothing to do with your qualification right now. It has to do with the potential that God has already put in you from the day you were born. Most of us want to qualify for the calling. Have you noticed the Bible says, let older women teach younger women how to love their husbands? It didn't say, let older successful women in marriage teach younger women how to be... So no, it says, the fact that they are older, they should have even gained some experience. Your calling is based on what God put inside of you. And the Bible says, the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance now let me explain it in a way that you will understand and most of you will understand now why many of us as pastors die young you see god can never change his mind about the calling for instance she gave an example you are called to be a pastor but you decided to be an evangelist What's wrong with an evangelist? He travels up and down preaching Jesus Christ and he doesn't have time to grow people and develop them. Now he goes and every time he goes to the stadium, miracles will happen. Why? Because the gifts are without repentance. Am I making sense? But the calling is also without repentance. And so God will begin to warn him, son, I never called you to be an evangelist. Go and become a pastor. He'll say, no, I'm enjoying evangelism. I can wear a white suit. People can see me on television. I don't want to go and start with 250 people in Ibadan. That's not what you called me to do. No, no, no. God says, that's what I called you. He said, no, 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 I want to do this. Then because God cannot remove his calling, he removes the man. The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. You can dodge. You can say you're not going to do it. But he will never change his mind about what he's called you to do. And thank God, he didn't only call us to church. Some of you are called to build businesses. Some of you are called to build schools and institutions. Some of you are called to build banks. Some of you are called to develop people. Some of you are called to make unique products and services. Some of you are called to government and to politics. The person who is being delayed is not God. It's you. Let's pray. Wherever you are right now, some of you have said, you say, how do I know? Because I hear it. When I make my first 10 million, Lord, I'll serve you. When we've built our house and our children are grown and they've gone to university, I'll come and serve you. You don't negotiate with, like you said, my stool in my bathroom cannot tell me or my kitchen. I can, you can't sit on me today. Come back next week. I don't know if you remember when Funola Craig came here. She told us a story 
by her brother about the fig tree. How many of you remember that? Who remember that? That's if you've never read that story in the Bible, you've never been confused about God. Jesus walks up to a fig tree and he can't find any figs on it. And the Bible says he cursed the fig tree. And everybody's like, why would you curse a fig tree that didn't have any fruit? You have to go and read it in another version of the same Bible where the Bible says the fig tree answered Jesus. Go and read it. The fig tree answered Jesus. You say, how? Does God speak to his creation? Yeah. Jesus asked the fig tree because for the fig tree to answer Jesus, Jesus had, had to have asked it for a question. And Jesus asked the fig tree, I want figs. And the fig tree answered and said, it is not the season of figs. And the creator of the fig and the creator of the season was putting a demand on the tree. And the tree was saying, I'm not ready to do it. And God cursed him. If God says you can be successful in Nigeria, he's not going to say you can be successful in Nigeria if there's good government. He has told you, you can be successful. If God says I'm, you're going to build this university, you can't go back and say uh, the economy, the dollar became 360, 450, I couldn't build it. No, no, says, no, 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 no. My word cannot return to me void. It always accomplishes that which I sent it to. If you've been dodging the call of God on your life, please don't enter into 2019 postponing it. It's a different case if you don't know what it is. It's a different case if you don't understand it. But please stop running away from the call of God. And some of us, our call is more than one. We're called to several things. Some people are called to many things. That's why the Bible gives the example of a man that has five talents, another one that has two, another one that has four or whatever, two and one. It's because God is showing you that some people here, yeah, they have one that they're focused on. That's it. Some of them have two that's more than one and they're supposed to focus on five some people have five gifts i am multi-gifted i do many things it has nothing to do with my ability it has to do with what god gave to me this morning talk to him where you lead me i will where you go I will go You have told me I will answer Lead me Where you lead, I will Where you go, I will follow. I will.
please for me. Just rise, please. It's just reverence, that's all. It's just reverence. Now, there's some prayers. Can I just beg you? Don't pray if you don't mean them. Because the Bible says you'll be judged by every idle word. We need to be very careful. If you're not ready, it's okay to tell God you're not ready. I know we have challenges. I have challenges. You know, no, no bees, no bees, no bees. I, I know I have challenges. Listen to me. I have challenges. I have an aged mother at home. You know, we have two sons in Canada. We have bills to pay. We have things we want to do we haven't been able to do. Projects we've started we've not been able to complete. Like everybody else here. But there's something that has constantly happened to me. And please don't take it the wrong way. I said, you won't give loan for the I said, I want five million, four million. They said, they won't give me. They will give me for a car, but not for a house. I can take it and go and use it for the house and lie. And I said, I can't lie because if something happens, I'll be in trouble. So I said, no, I will spoil my reputation. So I left it. So I told the man in this church, I said, you know, listen, they said I can't get the loan. He said, okay, you know what? I will loan you the money. I said, okay. He gave us the first loan. I think it was about two million naira. We laid the foundation of the house. Then my wife and I started writing him 100,000 naira checks every month to pay back. So in two years, we would have paid him 2.4 million naira, including his interest. Am I making sense? Are you here? So we would keep giving him the check. We didn't know he wasn't cashing it because our account never went down. Two years after giving him the money, he brings back the 2 million, the checks we've been giving him and says to us, go and add it to your house again. Because God knew I couldn't go to Abuja because of my calling. But he brought me another source because he has called me. You either have faith in him or you don't. There are some projects I get myself involved in that when I make the announcement, you don't know I'm, I'm more afraid of the announcement than you are. You see, I've been saying I'm going to put a stand over there where these people are going to move because they're sitting in the best seat in the house. I promise you, come 2019, that stand will be there you don't have to say I'm not even going to ask you for anything I don't even need your help for that one God is going to do it for me because it's in my heart burning I don't know if you get the point I'm making he gives me
and you will begin to see the provisions of God divinely supplied to your need. Now, everybody will be different. Mr. Kuti Yang's need will be met differently from mine than from Pastor Lasakwe or from Pastor Smith. Don't, God will never use the same hand to feed all of us the same way. But I'm saying he will make a way for you. Amen? He will make a way for you. Amen? He will make a way for you. Amen? By the way, listen to me. Now, my sister comes to me for advice <laughs> about business. That's not my area. So lift up your hand this morning. Say, Father, where you lead me, I will follow. Lord, I'm going to do what you've called me to do. I'm going to make it a priority in my life. I want to thank you in advance. Because today, I take your yoke. I take your yoke. I bring all my burdens and my needs into your hands. I hand them over to you. My children, my house rent, my school fees, the car I need, the programs I want to carry out, the, 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 the bills that I need to pay, the things I want to do, the things I want to do for my family, the house I want to build for my family, the places I want to take my family to. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm handing that over to you and saying, Lord, give me your burden today. Help me to carry it. Prosper the work of my hands that I may glorify you in the land of the living. Thank you, Father. Father, we give you thanks this morning. We thank you for your daughter that you've used for us today. I thank you for this wonderful congregation. I thank you for the men's group and their generosity today. Father, they surprised us. They blindsided us. We didn't even see them coming. And so, Lord, don't let them see you coming upon their lives. Don't let them see you appear the way that they expect you to appear. But Lord, surprise them. Visit with them. Bless them. Open windows of heaven. Create opportunities for them that they will prosper in a new and different way. Thank you, Father. We give you praise this morning. In Jesus' name. announcements uh, before we close service this morning uh, just to remind us again of um, the canopy of praise 2 p.m. as we come together to lift up our voices in worship ministering to the Lord also in prayers towards our nation and also for us to listen and hear what the Lord has to say unto us it's starting for 2 p.m. this afternoon please as pastor has announced we also have um, refreshment for those who will be waiting um, behind uh, um, behind after service before the commencement of the program so it's starting exactly 2 p.m. on the dot okay anyone anyone wants to <laughs> wants lunch to see pastor Isaac for the lunch but you should come with your birth certificate your is that not pastor's criteria and your grand great grandmother's um, ID card. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> they must be using it here with everyone. <laughs> well, we have refreshment for us. Um, just for those who will be waiting. And please, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Let me just quickly get this out of the way. Please, this is your first time. We want to welcome you properly this time around. Can you graciously rise to your feet? You're joining us for the first time. Please rise up on your feet as we welcome you. I know my sister raised up her hand earlier. If anybody is joining us, you're just joining us for the first time. Please do rise on your feet. Please, thank you very much, my brother, as well. Thank you for joining us in service this morning. Please, um, the first timers group, please let's take them to the first timers desk to welcome and to inform them about the church. Uh, the watch night service is tomorrow. New Year's Day is just two days away. So the watch night service is tomorrow. Service starts 9 p.m. in the evening. Service starts 9 p.m. in the evening. Please join us as we worship the Lord and as we also listen and hear what the Lord has for us. 
in the coming year. I am already excited about the year. The real success seminar for the year 2019. We actually, the overall theme for the new, um, for the real success seminar is influence, but we are actually looking at supernatural lifestyle in the marketplace. That's the overall theme for this media guy needs laying on of hands. The overall theme is influence, but we'll be looking at, for the month of January, we're looking at supernatural lifestyle in the market place and i think this is uh miss Ifaturuti did quite brilliantly this morning sharing quite a lot of experience with us so please join us i i i, I wish nobody will miss the real success seminar starting from from next year i wish we should not miss it because it is taking the supernatural into every sphere of influence and we're starting with looking at the marketplace next year uh come next week sunday also for the network service we'll be looking at in the spirit so we are looking at the, the topic in the spirit the in the spirit the language of the spirit that's what we'll be looking at in january for the network service so please i want to encourage us not to miss any of the services come january and all throughout the year yeah, just to remind us again tomorrow this afternoon 2 p.m we are having the canopy of praise as we pray for our nation then tomorrow 9 p.m we are having our watch night service we have a, a, a guest in our midst this afternoon and i want to invite them forward to close the service for us uh welcome with me mr and mrs olabi are they still in the house mr and mrs olabi thank you very much for for joining us in service so i want to invite mrs olabi to come forward to close the service for us this afternoon thank you very much Ma, for joining us praise the lord can we all rise up on our feet this morning hallelujah hallelujah father we give you praise we give you glory for a wonderful service this morning we thank you for how you've touched our lives. We give all the glory back to you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We thank you for the leadership of this church. We thank you for where you are taking this church to in 2019. Lord, we give you all the praise. Accept our thanks again in Jesus' name. We pray for every family represented here. We pray that your glory will go with us in the name of Jesus. As we proceed into the year 2019, we decree that it shall be a year of wonders and breakthrough for us in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, that you bless the works of our hands, O oh God. We decree that as we go forth today, let your presence go with us in Jesus' name. We decree that this week shall be a glorious week for us in Jesus' name. We decree that it shall be a week of testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you because great things shall come our way this week in the name of Jesus. Also make us a blessing unto those around us this week in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. We thank you because you've heard our prayers, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you all. So we say 2 p.m. for canopy of praise and um, watch night service tomorrow by 9 p.m.